Okay, so welcome back to the part two of the lottery number generator. I do apologize, the other video ended abruptly, and that was because um, I'm using free software to record the videos, and I forgot that my limit was 15 minutes, and as I was talking, the recording stopped. So let's pick up where we left off. We have a total of uh, six labels on our form, and these labels have uh, different names that will serve for the referencing of the label so the name is lotto number one label we can see that the label two is lotto number two label and so on and so on all the way up to six don't confuse the name with the text remember the text is just actually what's actually displayed um, on the actual um, form control but the name is actually the name of the actual control so that's what we're going to use to reference the these labels if we go back to our code, we have a uh, we actually have an array that holds a reference to these labels. So you could say we have a label array because it's holding labels and it's an array, right? Um, so what we're gonna go ahead and do is I'm actually gonna go ahead and create this array at the very top to make sure that it's a global variable for the moment, and we can actually reference it anywhere on, uh, in our code within this class. So let's go ahead and type label, label array, we'll keep it just like that. And in the constructor, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and say label array new, and we'll do label So we're going to go ahead and just say, okay, we're going to go ahead and have a variable called label array. But when we're actually going to go ahead and define what's inside of the array, when, which is when the form gets created in the constructor, we're going to go ahead and actually instantiate the actual array and say new label. And then we're using the open and close brackets to, um, to reference uh, the actual creation of the array. And then right after that, it's space and curly braces. Um, Whatever's inside the curly braces will actually be the elements of the array once the array is created. In this case, we're going to go ahead and use these labels as the elements for the array. So let's go ahead and type out what the elements are in this new array, and it will be all of our labels. And as you can see, IntelliSense is actually helping me out, so it comes in handy. I'll type in Lotto. The labels come up. I press Tab. It types it out for me. And there we go. So when the actual form gets created, we're going to have um, the form have a position of center screen. And then this label array is a variable holding all the labels which we've defined in between the curly braces, which are all these labels on the actual form. OK, so what we can do is now that we've done that, and this is a global variable at the very top, we can actually reference label array throughout any of these functions that we create. Um, so in the beginning, I went ahead and created an array of integers, which was used to store all the random numbers that were being created. But that was from, you know, I did that to show you um, how we can store um, data types into arrays and to verify that we're actually creating random numbers. Now that we have a an array of labels, we're gonna go ahead and delete that. We actually don't need it. Because at the end of the day, remember, what we want to do is we want to display that information to the end user. We're going to be displaying the text of the label. So instead of um, storing those in an array, we're going to go ahead and run the for loop. And instead of the lotto numbers array being uh, referenced, we're going to go ahead and say label array. And we're going to gener generate the number. And then um, we're going to say the label array, which will reference the actual label. Um, in this case, it can be label one if it's in zero, label two if the x is one. And we're going to go ahead and go ahead and uh, update the property. And this property is going to be the text. Because this array holds all the labels, it knows that we're referencing labels. So we have all the properties that pertain to an actual label so as you can see we have text we have name all that good stuff so let's go ahead and select text 
And just like in the last video, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and convert this because it's generating an integer. Text is of the type string. So let's go ahead and type to string at the very end of the creation. Hit save. And what this is doing is generating the number and then updating that number, converting it to a string, and then updating the text for um, whichever the element is um, referencing. Um, whichever labels actually be referenced on the form. So let's go ahead and hit uh, start. And now we have all our labels and we're going to go ahead and say, okay, generate lotto numbers. And there we go. Just like that. Every single label was updated and we have six separate and random numbers. Actually 29 and 29 are the same. So um, not that random depending on your luck. And I'll make a video on how to address that. Um, we'll be looking into link and how we can actually search for things and make sure that um, those numbers are not um, already in an array. We could use actually an array, but I'll be addressing that in a later video. And as you can tell, now we're able to generate random numbers um, for the lottery. All right, and let's continue. If you've noticed, I've been skipping um, some sections here. The video doesn't seem like there's cuts in the video, and that's because there's a lot of noise happening in the background. My neighbor's working on their yard, so I want to make sure that I don't ruin the recording. So let's go ahead and continue. Now that we actually have um, six random labels, let's make sure that there's actually no text when we first launch the uh, the program here. So we'll take this for loop and we'll copy it and we're going to go ahead and create a new function it'll be a private void function and we'll call it clear labels let's paste the for loop because we know that that's what we want and what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this generator and for each label array, we're going to go ahead and say string dot empty. And then clear labels will be referenced in the constructor as well. So in this case, we're going to call it just there. And regardless of what we type here, let's change the text. When we launch the program, they're going to be empty. We generate the lotto numbers, and there we go. Okay. So I've generated a load event. I don't want to do that. I keep doing that. Let's go ahead and go back. You might bump into this issue a lot, but now you know how to fix it. Let's get rid of that. And now we, we've gone ahead and generated the numbers. Okay. Um, one more thing is we're using a for loop here. Um, but one thing I wanted to point out is if you're actually not needing to keep track of the element index, you could also use a for each. So in this case, I can reference the label array and then um, do a for each um actually i'm thinking of javascript in my head but in this case it'll be for each first and then we can say variable um text um that's a bad one let's say um label text in and then we're going to reference the label array whoops intellisense strikes again we can do label text dot text equals string dot empty let's get rid of the for loop and a lot of times i like to use the for each because then i don't have to keep track of the index or how many you know what's the size of the array um, these are for situations that you don't need to reference the actual index all right so let's go ahead and give that a try and we're going to hit start there we go so everything's working the way it should. So instead of us telling the actual program for the 
you know what the for loop is going to keep track of for the index here we start at zero and it ends at uh, five because it's x uh, the condition is x um, less than six um, we're going to go ahead and just say hey for each label in the label array go ahead and do this and that kind of you know takes care of everything we don't really have to worry about the index and x and the conditions of the size and where it's at so I like doing that most of the time so there are different ways for you to iterate through the actual um, array so it's kind of cool I like it the last thing that I think it's actually missing is these it would be cool if these actually look like uh, like lotto uh, balls the ones that get drawn when they actually read the numbers so let's go ahead and import some uh, images here so we can finish up and now you have a uh, program that'll go ahead and uh, generate lotto numbers i hope somebody out there wins the lotto so let's go ahead and let me change the text apologize my dog just banged on the door but let me change the text for this act this uh label here this will be the what's up label oh that's label two now i'm clicking on the wrong one okay so label one just kind of Get an idea of where they're at let's bring them out here yes yeah, space them out a little bit and let's go back to good old google and try to get some uh images i usually just type circle and that should be good enough in the images um i like to also Use the transparent ones. That should that should be good enough, All right? Whoops, don't want to click on that. Just want to download it, save as an image, and we will do circle save. So now I have the circle, and let me bring in the image. That's going to be another control, which will be the picture control or the picture box. Drag it out. Let's go ahead and choose the image, import, and we'll do the desktop. This will be the circle. Say OK, and we definitely want to resize it. Hit the little arrow, and then we will do stretch image. That kind of gives it that sense. Resize it there, and we'll do send to back by right clicking. And then we'll do the exact same thing here. Send to back. I'm copying and pasting. Let's update these to actual numbers so we know where that uh, text will actually land. Uh, so we'll do text. Where are we at? going up and down like a maniac okay so we'll do one yeah see so it's it's not centered now because we know how one actual number will look like so i usually like to update the labels that i'm working with to dummy data that might be generated and this is a perfect example we can space this out bring it out here that's a lot better. We'll copy and paste this one as well. Center this one, the first one. That's pretty good. We'll do copy and paste. Send to back. And it looks like we're running out of space, right? So we're just going to go ahead and extend this a bit more. Very well. Went ahead and uh, updated that without you guys having to sit through that. I'll go ahead and move this over. And it looks like we're done. We're going to go ahead and hit start and there are no numbers there and there we go we've generated random numbers but not only one we've generated six so have fun play around with the for each loops um, in regards to generating numbers and as a challenge give it a try to generate something other than an integer that gets placed as a text on a label Try maybe generating labels. Try generating controls that are found in the toolbox and kind of mess around and see how that works. So that's my recommendation. Thanks again for watching. Hit the like button if you like it.